the clangor of sword and axe dies away. The shouting of the slaughter is hushed. Silence lies heavy on the red-stained snow. The bleak, pale sun that glittered so blindingly from the ice fields and the snow-covered plains strikes sheens of silver from rent corselet and broken blade where the dead lie as they have fallen. The nerveless hand yet grips the broken hilt. Helmeted heads drawn back in their death throes tilt red and golden beards grimly upward as if in a last invocation to Ymir, the frost giant, god of a warrior race. Across the reddened drifts and the mail-clad forms, two figures glare at each other. In all that utter desolation, they alone move. Slowly, through the corpses they come, as ghosts might come to a tryst through the shambles of a dead world. In the brooding silence, they stand, face to face. Both are tall men, built as powerfully as tigers. Their shields are gone, their corselets battered and dented, blood dried on their mail, their swords are stained red, their horned helmets show the marks of fierce strokes. One is beardless and black-maned, the locks and beard of the other are as red as the blood on the sunlit snow. <laughs> Barbarian, tell me your name, so that my brothers in Vanaheim may know who is the last of Wolfhair's band to fall before the sword of Heimdall. <laughs> <laughs> Not in Vanaheim, but in Valhalla, will you tell your brothers that you've met Conan of Samaria? Heimdall roars and leaps. <laughs> in a deadly arc as the seeming blade crashes on his helmet shivering into bits of blue fire. Conan staggers and his vision is filled with red sparks but as he reels he thrusts with all the power of his broad shoulders behind the blade the sharp point tears through brass scales and bone and heart and the red-haired warrior dies at Conan's feet. The Sumerian stands upright trailing his sword a sudden sick weariness assailing him. The glare of the sun on the snow cuts his eyes like a knife, and the sky seems shrunken and strangely apart. He turns away from the trampled expanse where yellow-bearded warriors lay locked with red-haired slayers in the embrace of death. A few steps he takes, and the glare of the snowfields is suddenly dimmed. A rushing wave of blindness engulfs him. Sinks down into the snow, supporting himself on one mailed arm and seeking to shake the blindness out of his eyes as a lion might shake his mane. <coughs> a silvery laugh cuts through his dizziness, and his sight slowly clears. He looks up. There is a strangeness about all the landscape that he cannot place or define, an unfamiliar tinge to earth and sky. But he does not think long of this. Before him, swaying like a sapling in the wind, stands a woman. To his dazed eyes, her body is like ivory. And save for a light veil of gossamer, she is as naked as the day. Her slender feet are whiter than the snow they spurn. She laughs down at the bewildered warrior with a laughter that is sweeter than the rippling of silvery fountains and poisoned with cruel mockery. Who, who, who are you? Whence come you? What matter? Uh, call up your men. Though my, my strength fail me, yet they, they shall not take me alive. I... I see that you are of the Vanir. Have I said so? I I cannot tell whether you are of Vanaheim and mine enemy or, or of Asgard and my friend. Far have I wandered. But a woman like you I have never seen. Your locks blind me with their brightness. Never have I seen such hair. Not even among the fairest daughters of the Aesir. By Ymir. Who are you to swear by Ymir? What know you of the gods of ice and snow? You, who have come up from the south to adventure among an alien people. <laughs> By the dark gods of my own race. Though I am not of the golden-haired Aesir, none has been more forward in swordplay. This day I have seen fourscore men fall. And I alone survived the field where warfare's reavers met the wolves of Braki. Tell me, woman, 
Have you seen the flash of mail out across the snow plains? Or seen armed men moving upon the ice? <laughs> I have seen the hoarfrost glittering in the sun. I have heard the wind whispering across the everlasting snows. <laughs> mm. Neord should have come up with us before the battle joined. I fear he and his fighting men have been ambushed. Wolfair and his warriors lie dead. I had thought there was no village within many leagues of this spot, for the war carried us far. But you cannot have come a great distance over these snows. <laughs> Naked as you are. Lead me to your tribe if you are of Asgard, for I am faint with blows and weariness of strife. My village is further than you can walk. Conan of Samaria. <laughs> Spreading her arms wide, she sways before him, her golden head lolling sensuously, and her scintillant eyes half-shadowed beneath their long silken lashes. Am I not beautiful, old man? <laughs> like dawn running naked on the snows. Then why do you not rise and follow me? Who is the strong warrior? who falls down before me. Lie down and die in the snow with the other fools, Conan of the black hair. You cannot follow where I would lead. Um. <laughs> with an oath by the lines of Ishtar! The Cimmerian heaves himself up on his feet, his blue eyes blazing, his dark, scarred face contorted. Rage <laughs> shakes his soul. But desire for the taunting figure before him hammers at his temples and drives his wild blood fiercely through his veins. Passion, fierce as physical agony, floods his whole being so that earth and sky swim red to his dizzy gaze. In the madness that sweeps upon him, weariness and faintness are swept away. He speaks no word as he sheathes his bloody sword and drives at her. Fingers spread to grip her soft flesh. <laughs> she leaps back and runs, laughing at him over her white shoulder. With a low growl, Conan follows. He has forgotten the fight, forgotten Niord and the Reavers who failed to reach the battle. He thinks only of the slender white shape, which seems to float rather than run before him. Out across the blinding white plain the chase leads. The trampled red field falls out of sight behind him. But still, Conan keeps on with the silent tenacity of his own race. His mailed feet break through the frozen crust. He sinks deep in the drifts and forges through them by sheer brute strength. But the girl dances across the snow, light as a feather floating on a pool. Her naked feet barely leave their imprint on the hoar frost that overlays the crust. On. Oh. On she leads. Black curses drool through the Cimmerian's parched lips. The great veins in his temples swell and throb, and his teeth gnash. All right. You cannot escape me. Lead me into a trap and I'll pile the heads of your kinsmen at your feet. Hide right from me and I'll tear the mountains apart to find you. I'll follow you into hell itself. Foam flies from the barbarian's lips as her maddening laughter floats back to him. Farther and farther into the waste she leads him as the hours pass and the sun slides down its long slant to the horizon. The land changes. The wide plains give way to low hills marching upward in broken ranges far to the north. He catches a glimpse of towering mountains, their eternal snows blue with distance and pink in the rays of the blood-red setting sun. In the darkling skies above them shine the flaring rays of the aurora. They spread fanwise into the sky, frosty blades of cold, flaming light, changing in color, growing and brightening. He did not wonder at the strangeness of it all. Not even when two gigantic figures rose up to bar his way. The seals of their mail are white with hoarfrost. Their helmets and axes are covered with ice. Snow sprinkled their locks. In their beards are spikes of icicles. And their eyes are as cold as the lights that stream above them. Brother! Who follows? I have brought you a man to slay. 
Take his heart, that we may lay it smoking on our father's board. The giants answer with roars like the grinding of ice. <laughs> the open shore. The eve of their axes shining in the starlight as the maddened Sumerian hurls himself upon them. <laughs> a rusty blade flashes before his eyes, blinding him with its brightness. <laughs> it gives back a terrible stroke that shears through his foe's leg. <laughs> the groan of the victim falls. And at the same instant, Conan is dashed into the snow, his left shoulder <gasps> numb from a glancing blow of the survivor's axe from which the Sumerian's mail has barely saved his life. Conan sees the remaining giant looming high above him like a colossus carved of ice etched against the coldly glowing sky. Outlander, how have you heard? The axe falls to sink through the snow and deep into the frozen earth as Conan hurls himself aside and leaps to his feet. The giant roars and wrenches his axe free, but even as he does, Conan's sword sings down. The giant's knees bend and he sinks slowly into the snow which turns crimson with the blood that gushes from his half-severed neck. <laughs> All the rest of your brothers, I'll give their hearts to the wolves. You cannot escape me! With a cry of fright, she turns, and she runs fleetly. She does not laugh now, nor mock him over her white shoulder. She runs as for her life, her golden locks blowing free. She hears the quick panting of her breath and sees the flash of fear in the look she casts over her shoulder. And Conan's untamed soul leaps up the fires of hell she has so well fanned. With an inhuman laugh, she closes in on her, just as she wheels with a haunting cry and flings out her arms to fend him off. Oh, oh, you're as cold as the snows. But I'll warm you with the fire of my own blood. With a scream and a desperate wrench, she slipped from his arms, leaving her single gossamer garment in his grasp. She springs back and faces him. Her golden locks in wild disarray, her white bosom heaving, her beautiful eyes blazing with terror. For an instant, Conan stands frozen, awed by her terrible beauty as she stands naked against the snow. And in that instant, she flings her arms toward the lights that glow in the skies and cries out in a voice that will ring in Conan's ears forever after. Save me! Oh, my father! Save me! The girl's ivory body is suddenly enveloped in a cold blue flame so blinding that the Sumerian throws up his hands to shield his eyes from the intolerable blaze. For a fleeting instant, skies and snowy hills are bathed in crackling white flames, blue darts of icy light and frozen crimson fires. Then Conan staggers and cries out, A wench! She's gone! The glowing snow lies empty and bare. High above his head, the witch lights play in a frosty sky gone mad. Among the distant blue mountains, there sounds a rolling thunder as of a gigantic war chariot rushing behind steeds whose frantic hooves strike lightning from the snows and echoes from the skies. All the snow-clad hills and the blazing heavens reel drunkenly to Conan's sight. Thousands of fireballs burst in showers of sparks and the sky itself becomes a titanic wheel which rains stars as it spins under his feet. The snowy hills heave up like a wave, and the Sumerian crumples into the snows to lie motionless. In a cold, dark universe whose sun was extinguished eons ago, Conan feels the movement of life alien and unguessed. An earthquake has him in its grip and is shaking him to and fro, at the same time chafing his hands and feet until he yells in pain and fury and gropes for his sword. Oh, 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 oh. He's coming to us. Hasten, we must rub the frost out of his limbs if he's ever to wield sword again. He won't open his left hand. He's clutching something. Conan opens his eyes and stares into the bearded faces that bend over him. He is surrounded by tall, golden-haired warriors in mail and furs. Conan, you live! By Krom! Neod! Am I alive? Or are we all dead and in Valhalla? We live, we live! 
We had to fight our way through an ambush, or we had come up with you before the battle was joined. The corpses were scarce cold when we came upon the field. We did not find you among the dead, so we followed your spoor. In Amir's name, Conan, why did you wander off into the wastes of the north? We have followed your tracks in the snow for hours. Had a blizzard come up and hidden them, we'd have never found you by Amir. We're not so often by Amir. Legends say that the god bides among yonder peak. I, I, I saw a woman. We met Brocky's men in the plains. I, I, I know not how long we fought. I alone lived. I was dizzy and faint. The land lay like a dream before me. Only now do all things seem natural and familiar. The woman came and taunted me. She was beautiful as a frozen flame from hell. A strange madness fell upon me so, so that when I looked at her, I forgot all else in the world. I followed her. Did you not find her tracks? Or the giants in icy mail I slew? We found only your tracks in the snow, Conan. Well, that may be that I'm mad. Yet you yourself are no more real to me than the golden-locked wench who fled across the snows before me. Yet from under my very hands, she vanished in icy flame. Here's delirious. <laughs> oh, not so. I know. It was a tally. The daughter of Ymir, the frost giant. To fields of the dead, she comes and shows herself to the dying. Myself, when a boy, I saw her. When I lay half slain on the bloody field of Wolf Raven, I saw her walk among the dead in the snows, her naked body gleaming like ivory, and her golden hair unbearably bright in the moonlight. I lay and howled like a dying dog because I could not crawl after her. She lures men from stricken fields into the wastelands to be slain by her brothers, the ice giants who lay men's red hearts smoking on Ymir's board. Giant's ah, old Gorm's mind was touched in his youth. Conan was delirious from the fury of the battle. Any of those blows might have addled his brain. It was hallucination he followed into the wastes. You speak truth, perhaps. It was all strange. And yet, he breaks off, glaring at the object that still dangles from his clenched left fist. My Grom! The others gape silently at the veil he holds up. A wisp of gossamer that was never spun by human distaff. <laughs> 